At some point in your career as a 3D artist, you need a strawberry. Either you're making a flavored beverage, a cleaning product, or any other type of product that makes it seem fruity. So making this strawberry will be a wonderful asset for the rest of your blender career. You can check out my Gumroad for some free and paid assets as well. So let's get started straight away. I'm going to delete the cube and the point light. Then I will press Shift A, Mesh, and add an icosphere. I will set the subdivisions to 3. Then I will go towards the icosphere, click on 7 and select a large area right over here. So maybe something like this. We could add those as well. And now we have this shape for the strawberry. And there's actually something very interesting with the strawberry, namely that it has this exact shape on the top where the green leaves grow from. So that is something interesting to know. But first of all, I'm going to press on Control I, and now we have this selection. I will press Control B and make a bevel out of this. I'll make it quite big, maybe something like this. And then I will press Control I once again, but now we have this selected. So I'm going to deselect all of this by holding Control, clicking on this, and selecting the remaining phases. Now we have all of these parts selected. So I'm going to press I, inset this to something like this. And now we can press S and scale it to the inside. I will click on Shift D, which gives us all of these parts. I'm going to separate the selection by pressing on P, selection, and then I will select only this icosphere. I'm going to call it Seeds. Then I will go over to the modifier section and add a subdivision surface modifier by pressing Ctrl 2. And now I will do the same for this object, Control 2 As you can see, it's already starting to look a bit like a strawberry. We can select the seeds, add a modifier, type solidify, and add the solidify on top of the subdivision. Now, if we increase this, it comes out of the strawberry. This is what we want. So I'm going to set it to minus 0.006. Then I will select both of those, click on one, and I will go to the bottom side of this, select this, click on proportional editing, G, and make sure that it's very big because you do not want to stretch out these seeds so that they are much bigger than the seeds over here. So I'm going to make this quite large. So it's proportionally editing on the Z axis, kind of like so. And now all of the seeds will still remain the same size. It would be a bit weird if all the seeds are bigger and then smaller and stuff like that. Now I'm going to select this top part, Control plus, and bring it down to make the shape of the strawberry, something like this. Now this is already starting to look like a strawberry. There are a couple of things that we can do to make it even better. So select both our objects, go into edit mode and scroll the proportional editing in a bit further and bring this down, something like so. Maybe S and Z as well. And now it's a bit more flat. Now there's not enough randomization for the strawberry to actually look good. So what we need to do, select both of these and go over here and very subtly rotate things around. Don't make it too much because if you do that, it will not look good. You can also scale it just a little bit. Be very subtle with this. Don't go like this and make weird shapes. Just be very subtle. Rotate it and do this alongside the entire mesh. This will make it look a bit more randomized and a bit better in my opinion. And now this is the basis of our strawberry. There's a couple more things we can do. Select both of them and go over here and bring this inside a bit. And move it along so that it's a bit roughed up because that's just the way strawberries work. They are not perfect, even though they may seem like it. And in this fashion, we can create a very randomized looking strawberry. Once again, be subtle with this. Don't overdo it. So there are two things left to do. We have to texture this and we have to make the top part. So right now we are going to texture the strawberry. So let's open this up let's go over here, shader editor. And now we are going to add some notes. First of all, I am using shortcuts to add my noise textures. I put it on shift one, but you can also do shift A and type noise texture, bring it in there. So I'm going to bring in a noise texture, control T, plug it into the object, take the factor and plug it into the base color. Let's see what we're doing. So this is what it looks like right now. And if we increase and decrease this, we get some interesting looking results. So I'm going to set it to three. Let's add in a color ramp. And now we need three colors in this color ramp. So I'm going to take this, bring it all the way down, bring it upwards just a bit and make sure that it's somewhere in a reddish tone. Then right over here, I'm going to select quite light tone for this. And then we'll add plus and make it more of a deep red color somewhere over here, something like this. And now this kind of looks like the color of a strawberry, but we're not there yet. So I'm going to take this color ramp, control shift D, and then it will keep its connection to the noise texture. Click on the backspace button and it will reset the color ramp, plug it into the roughness. I actually like working in the cycles version better. So I'm going to click on cycles. I've already added my HDRI, it's this one. It's called Evening Meadow and I downloaded it in 2K from Polyhaven. And I'm just going to enable that and set the sky strength to 0.5. So right now it looks something like this. It's already starting to look pretty good, but we're definitely not there yet. What I'm going to do is first of all, leave it like this because we have to add some other stuff 
first. Let's make a new noise texture, bring it in here and connect it to a bump height. Bump height, normal in the normal. And now you will see this happening, which is a bit too much for my liking. So I'm going to bring the noise texture closer and scale it up quite a lot, maybe all the way until 200 even. And this will already give us some extra details to work with. I still think it's a bit too big, so I'm going to increase this to 300, something like so. And this already gives us some cool and interesting looking results for this strawberry. So I'm going to decrease the strength by a whole lot and it has to be subtle, it has to be subtle like that. So I'm going to bring in a displacement next. So we'll bring in a displacement node right over here and I'm going to connect it to the displacement in the output. But we need to enable it under the material section as well. So go to material, go to settings and instead of bump only you want to select displacement and bump. And now you can see it's doing some funky stuff. It's actually kind of looking like a rose, pretty interesting. But we are going to change it anyway. So turn the scale to 0 0.003 and it will be very subtle right now. And there's actually nothing to drive this displacement as of yet. So you guessed it, I'm going to bring in a new noise texture and connect the factor to the height. Now I want to see what this looks like, but first I'm going to bring in a color ramp in between. So it's not very contrasty. I'm going to increase this at first and we want to have some random dots in there to break up the reflection and stuff like that. So this is what it looks like for now. I'm going to bring this all the way over here and maybe we can bring this all the way over there. Let's see what it looks like. So I'm definitely looking at the reflection right here because on what I saw in the pictures, this should actually be quite flat in most places, but not in all places. So I'm going to check this out. Maybe increase this even more and increase the contrast towards this side. So we should have less black, more white. Let's see what it does. And now it's adding these interesting patterns right over here. And if we look at this right now, it's starting to look like a strawberry. We're getting very close. I think these indentations are a bit too harsh. So I'm going to increase the detail, take the roughness and bring it up just a little bit, just to break that up a bit. And just in case you're wondering what that looks like, it looks like this. And if you want to decrease the strength of this, you can also take the black part and make it, make it a bit more white. So I'm going to leave it like this and maybe we can decrease the strength of the bump just a little bit because I still think it's a bit too much. And now we have this exact effect that I was talking about earlier going on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the detail on this one as well, maybe increase the roughness, because we do not want it to be as clearly visible as this, that we are using multiple textures like so. So I'm going to increase the roughness just a bit, and this brings our color variation to a greater level. Now, there's one more thing I would like to do with this. However, this is computationally heavy. You may choose not to do it, but I am going to add it. Subsurface, increase the weight to one, and now this looks a little bit better than before. So this is what our strawberry looks like right now. It's starting to move into the right direction. We can always make changes in the future if we do not like something. But for now, I'm quite content with this. So the next part is going to be this yellow texture. So the seeds, they are kind of yellowish greenish and we can basically do the same trick for this one. So I'm going to bring in a noise texture, bring it in here, plug it into the base color, control T, set it to object. Color ramp, add it right there. By the way, I'm using Control Q as a shortcut for my color ramp. This is actually not a default Blender shortcut, so you have to do that yourself. So we need to change the color of this. So let's see what it looks like. Not seeing very much, are we? Let's have a look. Ah, something like this. We can increase the scale of this so we have more black areas to work with. Let's go ahead and maybe increase it like so and change the colors. So we can make this a bit more yellow, but not too much. It shouldn't be too crazy, nothing too crazy. Something like this, maybe go over here for the darker tones and we can select a more greenish type color. As you can see, this doesn't look good at all. So I'm going to increase the detail, increase the roughness to smooth it out just a little bit. And now we have a bit more variation in our texture going on. Maybe I'm not entirely a fan of this. So I'm going to move this color ramp to the side just a little bit, increase or decrease the roughness actually, the roughness all the way over here. Now what we can also add is a coat. So the clear coat for this one, and it should add a little bit more of a reflective type surface. Add a hue, saturation and value node. Let's bring it in here and decrease the saturation a bit. Something like this, just a little bit. Maybe we can make it a bit brighter as well. And in this way, we do not have to change the entire color in the color ramp all the time. We can just make minor changes doing this. So let's see what it looks like. Pretty good, if you ask me. So it looks uh, like a strawberry as it should. And right now I'm going over here Select this, select this part, shift S, cursor to select it, because we are going to add an image texture as an images as planes that we are going to use as the leaves on the top of the strawberry. So shift A, image, images as planes, 
and add the strawberry texture. I'm going to add it once again to my Patreon for free so you can get it, all right? So here it is, RY90. I'm going to scale it up so it looks a bit more correct. Uh, it was made in 4K, so I'm going to make two loop cuts right over there. Press on tree and select these faces, X, and delete the faces. And now we have a bit more of a nice and equal space to work with. So I'm going to increase the amount of loop cuts we have here because we want to rotate and change this mesh so it doesn't look as flat as it is. So let's see what that looks like. So now it's flat and actually we want to hide that fact. So I'm going to bring this upwards until the green is all the way on the top, something like this. It doesn't have to be centered. It can be a little bit off-centered, no problem. And now I will enable proportional editing right over here. You can also press O. Click on one, so we have uh, vertices selected or click on two if you want to do it with edges. And basically what we are going to do is make sure that nobody sees our mistakes. And one thing I'm noticing is that this should actually be a bit more downwards. So I'm going to bring it down just a little bit and make sure to select both the elements. G and Z, bring it down just a little bit and bring this down as well until we have it sitting on the plane. And now we want to hide the fact that we used an images as planes. So I'm going to deform this mesh just a little bit. So G and Z rotate it a bit. And the idea is that no matter from what angle you are looking at it, it shouldn't be noticeable as an images as plane. It should just look like we created this actual mesh. And now if we look at it from this side, it looks pretty cool. Let's have a look. And now if we look at it from the top, it looks pretty cool. I do think there's a harsh line here, so I'm going to shade it smooth and then it will be removed. And it should go a little bit more to the top, no problem. And just make sure that the outer edges, like this one, are more down. And then we can place some inner edges, for example over here, and bring it upwards just a bit, just to give it that 3D vibe. Very cool, but the texture is not done. So I'm going to select this, go over here, and it's already plugged into the alpha and we have the base color, but we need to add a couple more notes to make this look good. First thing I'm going to do, bring in a color ramp, connect this to the roughness and the image itself. One thing that's weird with these kind of image textures, you should actually invert this. And now it will be its original color. As you see, it is a bit too reflective, something like that. But if we reverse this, it looks a whole lot better. Maybe we can take the black color, bring it upwards just a bit somewhere in the middle. So one more thing we can do is add a bump. So I'm going to take this image texture, duplicate it, Shift D, then go over here, bump, height, set it over there in the normal, and we get some more details for free, but it's a bit too strong. So I'm going to remove the strength and bring it down to, let's say 0 0.075, something like that. And as you can see, this is starting to look like a beautiful strawberry, don't you think so? I think it's a beautiful strawberry. And there's one more thing that we can do with this texture, and that is to go over here, add an add shader, because it's a leaf, and when light hits the leaf, it actually passes through it just a little bit. So we're going to reenact that in 3D. Add this add shader, translucent BSDF, bring it right over there, plug it into the shader as well. But we need something else to work with for this. So use this as the color. And we can also take this as the normal, plug it in there, move it a bit to the side, add a hue, saturation and value. Bring it right over there and it should be a bit brighter. So when light passes through it, it becomes a bit brighter. I'm also going to increase the saturation just a little bit. Now we can also take the hue, saturation and value, bring it over there. And maybe you want to play around with how dark or how light this looks. And maybe you want to increase the saturation to something crazy like this. I'm not going to do that. I'm just simply going to leave it at 1.07. So I think this is a beautiful looking strawberry. It looks very cool, quite realistic. Don't go too close because you will be able to see that it's not that realistic but we are not going to use it from that close. If you do want to use closer renders, you have to work with the procedural materials just a little bit more, but this is the overall basis for our strawberry, which we are going to be using at approximately this distance. I placed the hex codes I used in the video itself, so you should have the same colors as I do. I also showed you which HDRI I used, which is kind of important when doing reflective type materials. So this already looks a bit different than the first HDRI we used. So keep that in mind. But for now, I think this strawberry looks cool for the purpose we are going to be using it for a couple of videos later. In the next video, we are going to make a kiwi. So you have two fruits instead of one. Check out my Gumroad for all products that help you with lighting and click here to watch the next video.